Hi there. I was looking through some really, really old family photos the other day and I came upon either my grandparents or my great-grandparents' wedding photos which were hand-coloured black and white images. And I wondered how I could get the same kind of effect without doing a black and white and hand colouring it in Photoshop, but maybe by combining uh, different media as such. So the, the following Photoshop demonstration is going to show you how to combine an infrared photo with a colour photo to give the same sort of image uh, as appears to be a hand tinted black and white. I hope you find it interesting. Thanks for watching. So here are the two images I had in mind. There's the reasonably nice uh, infrared shot of this little village pond uh, and this utterly uninspiring colour photo of the same pond. Now you'll, you'll notice that they're taken from the same spot but they're actually taken with different focal length lenses even on different formats of camera. One's a micro four thirds, the other's a full frame. Never really had the intention of combining these two. Um, but when I, I sat down and started processing them, I, I gave it a go and it kind of worked. So this is how I, I went about it. Uh, firstly, the important thing is to overlay them one on top of the other nice and tidily. And of course, Photoshop has that readily done for us. We go file down to scripts, down to load files into stack. We click on add open files. We've got the two files there already and we click on attempt to automatically align source images. Photoshop does this so much better than we ever could because it actually warps the two photos to such an extent that they fit together. Uh, and if I switch that infrared layer off and on, you'll see what a, a remarkably good job it's done of combining those two images. Now to crop them, in this case, I'm going to use the perspective crop tool rather than the regular crop tool. I'm going to start from that corner, come down there to about there. Notice that the colour image only starts about th that point. Now you'll see there it's snapping from there to there. If you hold the control key down, it takes the snap, it turns the snap away. And just when you're doing something like this, it's a heck of a lot easier. And there we have the image. I want that now to be a nice rectangle. I hit return or enter and it comes in immediately, it straightens everything up and it works. There is our two images now overlaid one on top of the other. To get the effect of that black and white hand tinted we change the blending mode of the top layer and I went through most of them until I found something I was kind of happy with until I got to luminosity and luminosity would be the bottom one and luminosity just it gave me what I had in mind it may appeal to you it may not appeal to you this is this is going to be marmite for a lot of people I totally understand that and that's almost it now there's a couple of items here that I'm not overly happy with we've got uh, a vague image of a duck there if you notice you can see it it's just a, an odd smack of color so I'm going to add another layer here pick the spot healing brush make sure we're on content aware and sample all layers so we can work on this transparent layer we'll just take the duck out there further up here and bear in mind we're currently working at 544 percent so don't worry about the noise it's going to be hideous take out the life preserver and the post next to it and its reflection and there we have our completed picture and there's our completed image uh, hand tinted black and white in effect I hope you've enjoyed it I hope it's given you a few ideas to go and play around with and uh, I'll be back soon if you haven't already subscribed please do so and I'll see you shortly